Hello, good morning and welcome back to the Fish Locker. Today my Motley crew and I are going to be fishing with Aaron Lidston aboard his boat Happy Days on a commercial conga fishing trip. Now, I've been on, I've done a couple of commercial videos already. I did a, a commercial cuttle fishing, a commercial whelk fishing, a commercial crab fishing. I've been asked quite a few questions about them. Now, in order to be a commercial fisherman, a professional commercial fisherman, you need to have certain safety certificates. We have all got those safety certificates. The plan today is that we're going to head out, we're fishing out of Dartmouth. I'm going to head out, try and catch some bait, then go right out into the English Channel, anchor up on a really big wreck and fish for eels and ling. Every fish that we catch today that is, that is of legal size will be landed to the market later on in the day. Just wish us luck. As usual, I'll try and explain everything I can do as we're doing it. If there's anything that I don't understand, I will get Aaron and his crew to explain. Let's go. Right, sun just rising up over there. I've got some fancy rods and reels today. We've all brought our own gear, our own baits and our own rods and reels. So throughout the day I will talk you through everybody's everybody's different kick, because we've all brought something slightly different. All gonna be big and heavy though. Like I say, the first order of the day is to try and find some fresh bait. And then I will talk you through the rest. Still there, mate. Alright, so I just thought I'd let you know any else you know. Uh, what is it, herring or herring? Yeah, it's all herring. Yeah, it's all herring on the looks of it, mate. Can you get a big one of herring in it? I haven't, I've just took it off, mate. Yeah, bunny, aren't they? <laughs> They're quite big as well, oh, mate. They're about, about mm, eight. Well, I put it with Ted Smith. It was at this point, only two minutes out of the harbour, that I realised that there was probably going to be an awful lot of adult language on this day. Yeah, it's about nine inches long, so it's all what I will try and do is bleep it all out and I will give you a emoji instead. <laughs> His missus is laughing like hell watching this. What a quick stop for bait, but it's only herring. As Aaron was saying, they're quite soft. We've got a fair bit of bait going on in here. And I'm going to knock some rigs up. Go and sit inside at Whale House and knock some rigs up. <laughs> we've managed to get all the way out to the wreck we've still got a little tiny bit of tide so there's no point putting the anchor down yet so we're fishing for some pollock Aaron has just absolutely nailed it with a what are you calling that a 14 or a 16 yeah 14 I reckon it's a good solid stocky fish isn't it yeah yeah so while the tide's still running for the last part of the ebb last part yeah and it's, then when it's, it's not ideal at the moment to get the anchor down we could get the anchor down for an hour or so but slack water is going to spin off and we'll be in no man's land so we might as well let the tide finish as it is on the ebb and then as soon as it turns for the flood you'll have wind and tide together it'll be nice and easy to anchor then we should hopefully get stuck into some proper fish That's not that i'm complaining with that one <laughs> no you wouldn't at all no nope, need a few tips for that one i reckon just capitalizing on what's happening like he says there we've, we've got maybe an hour until the tide turns round to give it optimum time for putting the anchor down so we'll capitalize on some pollock now all the traces are they are is just some variation of a long boom trace with some form of soft plastic. There's a cracker of fish. We're almost at the point now where the tide's going to turn so we can put the anchor down. It's slackened off that much that we've been able to do a little bit of drifting for Link. All we're doing is rigging up some. I'll just have a look at that rig there. It's just incredibly simple, like one hook Ling rigs. And I've just, uh, I've just dropped down there now. I've, I've not caught as many pollock as everybody else on the lures when we're in for pollock. But what I did do was, as soon as I put a ling rig down there. <laughs> well done, boy. I, I'd like to say that it was, it was a targeted capture, and I meant to do all that. But you'd be lying. But I would be lying. <laughs> that was a ling rig. I managed to pick up well, a double figure pollock. Yeah, you don't Tight have to. On. Don't worry, you don't have to put it back. Tight on the bottom with the, with a piece of pout in his face. Well done, mate. Thank you. We've got to the point in time now where we are going to put the anchor down. Aaron's just going to drop. This is the, uh, you say it was called the Murray, this wreck, didn't you? What's that, mate? The Murray. Yeah, this is, yeah. Um, now look. 
This is exactly the same setup as when I'm anchoring my boat, just, la just a lot larger. Using an Aldini ring and a buoy to hold the anchor. And all we'll plan to do there is anchor up, up tide of the wreck, so we'll be sat down over it. Here we are. We've got the anchor down. Now the theory is there that you'll position yourself up tide of the wreck. Drop your anchor so that the tide lays your back right above it. So you can drop your lines down into the wreck, pull the fish out. Because we're really early on in the tide now, we might have to re-anchor in a couple of hours if the wind changes or if the tide kicks. It's not uncommon to have to re-anchor a couple of times when you're fishing like this. Yeah. When the boat gets set back, it'll take a while, it'll swing around. When it gets laid back into a place it likes to sit, we'll drop the lines off the back. I'll talk you through all the rigs and everything as people get set up. While the lads are just starting to get a bit of a scent trail, I've, I've elected to try and catch a little bit more bait. There's a bycatch. What a lovely little tub of it. Now you can tell the difference between these and reds. The difference between these and reds being these big pectorals here. A lovely looking fish and stunning eating as well. This is about the size of what I would keep because it's only a little fillet what you get off the sides. Nice, nice pair of goujons. Yeah. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. They've got a lovely blue eye and all, aren't they? Pretty little fish, aren't they? Americans call them a sea robin. Mm. But yeah, they, they catch them worldwide, don't they? You catch them in Australia, you catch them in America. Oh, cool little fish. fish. Thank you very much. No well done, mate. Just really quickly, I'll talk you through our rigs. Now, the rig I'm using is just a very simple sliding ledger. It just means that leads on a slider like that. I have got a hook length of yeah. around yeah, about two and a half to three feet, ending in a ten hook, yeah, and I've just got a back hook flat. Yeah. Uh, yours, yours is slightly different to mine, isn't it? So, I've got my leads. My leads locked in on a slider. So yours is effectively a bolt rig, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So fucking cross lock. Turned out to 250 pound mine. And you've got, a, you've got a longer hook length on this. Yeah. Four, four foot. And then with an 11 out, must on the top. And you're using a pouting? Yeah, heading goes for a pouting, yeah. Now, it's hard, <laughs> hard to liberate between the two. I like mackerel because it's got an awful lot of scent. But pouting, pouting is what lives in the wreck with them. Pouting is what they're eating normally, isn't it? So if you're presenting them a bit, they're used to eating. I know a lot of lads have caught the PV congas on pouting. Hopefully. Yeah, so the, also the rigs, the rods, what we've got, man's, um, man's a 30-50 class ugly stick, and I've got a 16 class Turn off. rail. Uh, and yours is there. I've got a 30, 30 pound class habit, uh, uh, and then a 38 cow so. I've got enough. mainline braid. 80 pound braid, 80 pound leader. Same as me, I've got 100 pound leader, but yeah, just really heavy gear in it, really strong. It's got to be, yeah. Because when you're fishing down into the rough stuff, if you catch a big eel, you want to be able to get it out of there, don't you? Can't let it pull you in, yeah. Exactly. Right. The boat's almost sat back at anchor, so we're just going to drop a bit to go in now. We've had baits in water maybe about 10 minutes. First couple of little trembling bites. Crispy bees, a little bit of lime. And we've managed to get two fish on at the same time. It's not uncommon, is it, when you get on the feed like that, you'll get, you get five or six people into fish at the same time. Yeah, right? no, to be fair, this should be the start of it now. Which one? So you clear your outside. There you go. There you go. First fish. Uh, I'm going back. Yeah, no. Tell you what, we're pale. Yeah, he's pale, isn't he? Get him in the, get him in the bin first, man, before you unlock it. There you go. This is a nice fish. This is a nice yeah, fish. Yeah, he's a... He's over 30. Yeah, I'm looking at the time, man. I'll be Well it started. Uh, that'll be about it, won't it? Uh, one more. Hang on, hang on. Right. Yeah. Tom's just getting a bite there. Poised like a heron. Oh, wiring. Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> 
right. Yeah, it's, it's getting a scent trail going. Once you manage to get these fish on the feed, it is, it is hopefully going to be pretty full on. Swing and a miss. Yeah. Got it? Yeah. Is it yes, no, yes, no? Something. Mm. I'll, throw, yeah, I'll throw a bite on here now. Yep, there's a fish. Right on, John. Have you gone in the wreck? Is that right? I wasn't quick enough on it. I ended up losing my rig and so did Ben next to me. So that indicates there was a little piece of net or like lost rope or something around that part of the wreck. As it was, the wind swung round again. I mean, you can look now. The fog's come back in and it's kicked us off the wreck. So we've re-anchored again. Too full, we weren't picking out too many fish. There was that little bit of snag, which was like a piece of ghost net or, or rope. And the wind swung us round. Hopefully, third time's a charm. Really quickly, mate, can you just, can you just talk to us about your rod and reel? What? Yeah, You're using a Kenzaki, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, 3050 Ken, is it 50? Yeah, 3050 Kenzaki, 16 Tonica with 80 pound braid. Yours is a, a Shimano Tonica, I've got a, a Torium 16. So both roughly the same size, aren't they? Yeah. Um, two speed, I mean. What did you say your mainline braid was? 60? Uh, I think that's 80. It's either 60 or 80. That's 80 pound leader. Five, so 80, 80. Uh, yeah, 80, 80. Um, just slightly. Yeah, just sliding ledger again. That fish that you had there earlier, that was on mackerel as well, wasn't it? Yeah, just frozen mackerel, nothing, uh, nothing that special. Yeah, like I said, it, the key is, is getting a scent drill going. Drawing the fish out of the wreck with the scent. Because we've had to move again now, it means we're going to have to re-establish a scent drill. So it's probably going to be a little bit of time before the fish come on the feed. Well, you can knock them on the head sometimes, can't you? You yeah. can drop a bit down and it just clonk straight on top of the fish. It doesn't always happen like that. Anchoring quite far up. Tied on we so you yeah. need a bit of setting and going. We are um, worked out to be about 180 feet up tide of the wreck. That's to try and draw the fish out of the wreck towards your bait so you don't lose as many in the wreck. It's gonna happen. It's why I knocked up a load of spare ribs, that's why it's why we made up a load of a load of spare traces before we started. Just so it's um, it saves time if you lose one. Just clip another one straight on and you go back down. But yeah, we're fishing through the flood of the tide every every minute that we're wasting tying rigs or tying leaders and things like that is, is a moment you're not fishing for. Got both of you in shot, yeah? Yeah, all three of us if you want. Chris, it feels like he's got a good deal on there. Hello, he has got a good deal. Man's tried going back down, but it's not, it's not a big deal. Tony, if that is a big deal, you'll have to come and take my rod and I'll, I'll gaff it, all right? Right, depends who's up first. If I, if I get up first, I'll, I'll gap it. Yeah, well, yeah. Just that little move. See, it's all it was. 20 feet is all it was. 30 feet. I'm saying that these bits haven't been down for very long. No, that's what I mean. Oh, my days. It's getting the fish off the feed, though, isn't it? We should be. One inch bit left. Yeah, that bite. <laughs> it's a good job I was paying attention because it could have had a rod out my hand. Right, is there any chance you could shunt across a bit, my man with a beard there, let them in there and then I can get in that corner, that's lovely. Just till we get them out of the way. That's a proper one you got there, boy. Ready, ready, go. Oh, right. oh, this yeah, if I'm coming. Look. Look. Uh, yeah. Nice. That is a proper, proper, proper one. Oh my days. Chris. I've got it. I'm Watch it, lad. Oh, 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 That is a nice fish, that mate. 
Gonna come left, mate. I'll back up and get it over this gap in the, the railings. Yeah, he's pushing six, I I mean, you can put him in there if you want, but I ought to put him on the back cups. <laughs> Right here, I've got mined up. Yeah, we have. Am I okay dropping on this side or not? Yeah, 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 you crack on. I just didn't know what that eel's doing up there. That's another nice fish. Managed that one. Oh, sorry, mate. Right, right where are we going? That just goes to show there. I mean, I pulled out a fish that was, what, 20 pounds in between those two. <laughs> <laughs> that is that's a cracking fish, that. Yeah. Get them baits back down. It's got to be 60, that, isn't it? I'll give you a hand in a sec, Tony, if you let me. Uh... Yeah, you got that too. Can we see the bite off? No, we'll get him in the bucket. Give it right. Yeah, give him a good t around the ear a few times. Fuck it down now. you front wreck. It's on there. <laughs> Right, lead on, if you can. You broke it. Yeah, good on your right arm. Here it is. Well, well done, John. Well Am I off? I bought a bottle of drink in that, didn't I? I've just dropped back down and within a couple of minutes. A minute max. Another fish on, so that's definitely on the feed. You ain't sweating yet, Mr. Uh, Mr. Locker. You're not sweating yet. You're either fit or I ain't Someone. done my job properly. Colour. Colour. Is he a gaffer or a lifter? I need a lifter. Lifter. Okay, you just walk towards Bradley now. Right? Alright. Got him. Uh, we'll have him straight in there. Somebody. Him. Oh, yeah. It's an important moment right now, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I nearly said you're filming that because it might be the only one. <laughs> there we go. Size of that. Well done. Cheers, thank you very much. <laughs> this just goes to show you that even though we're fishing shoulder to shoulder, and we've all had multiple fish out, it's just whichever oh, bait, whichever bait they fancy down there. Yeah, this is what I was talking about, about getting them on the feed. It is absolute carnage. But it's, it's getting that scent trail going, it's getting them fish competing with each other. As soon as you get a bait down there, because there's, cause there's fish competing with each other, they're just taking them rapid. <laughs> right. Yeah. Just managed to get all them eels subdued. Got them packed away and into boxes. And the first thing they do there is put a bit of ice on them. And that's just to make sure that when they reach the mass, they're in, they're in too much condition. Yeah, when they're um, when they're actually going through the dying process, they um, they generate heat. Yeah. So that's the one time you want to get ice on them is as they're generating the heat. Don't see the point in killing fish to uh, no, no, I give it its best chance of making money. Because I thought it was, it was just being stubborn. Sure, it's got a full stomach though, it's probably full of mullet. Yeah, that's it, that, that'll be a mullet there. <laughs> I bet that's just taken off. Oh, yeah, well, that didn't really help either. No, nothing else. What are you calling, mate? No, I'm not that good. Is there anybody right. in the big one? Just putting some good runs on uh, there. Oh, I don't know, Ian, if I had eel, yeah. Yeah, that's a tidy eel, actually. Right, mind yourselves. Got some stockiness sort of his head, hasn't he? Well done, my friend. Yeah, what a man. Yes, exactly. Yeah, 50 odd, isn't he? That's a fat in. Oh, 
wheels on. Come on, Gobsy, you lizard. Oh, yeah, full house! Go on, Gobbo! Right, I'll better get a bait ready to drop down because there'll be no bait there. Give me some big licks there, Tom. Which is often give it anyway. Solid bite or quite finicky? Really gentle. They have seemed to. The the they've been really finicky for the last half an hour or so. It's not for the faint hearted this lake. Right, my rod tip there look, it's just sat. What you're looking for is kind of like a like that. And this is one of the reasons why we'd knocked up a load of hook lengths at the start as well. Just because yeah, it's hard on the gear this. I think even not taking chances, checking your leader each time and checking your yeah. hook length if it's frayed and stuff. Well, that's it, yeah. Every time I brought you up, you kind of run my hands down the last any, meter or two a leader. And any weakness in your uh, in any of that end tackle, and they will exploit it if you get a decent one on. Yeah. Last thing you want is that fish of a lifetime, isn't it? Coming off, you've got a bite on it. Yeah, it's, it's a little tiny one, it's been it? messing around with it. I'm saying that this is one of those situations as well. Usually, I'd be early to strike at them. But we're taking all these fish, so it doesn't matter if you hook them deeper into the throat because you're knocking them on the head when they come to the boat anyway. Speak to my mate there about that, can't you, Tom? have got a complaint here, Tom. What's that? He said about a cup of tea. Colour. It's half of the spring, isn't it? Nice looking. Wait, it's a fish. I would say he's over 40. Close to 50, I reckon. Well, they're getting bigger. We've had two minutes of a quiet spot on deck. I'm just coming here to talk to Barney. Was, um, you don't do healing all year, do you? There's, there's only really. No, a um, couple of reasons. One, I think certainly in the last four or five years the seasons do seem to be changing where traditionally in years gone by when I sort of first started doing this you'd start congering about sort of April May time probably by September October it'd all be over whereas now I don't think the best of the helium really starts until August September they're, um, they're here all year though aren't they? They are here all year but we've been having a lot of problems the last few years with algal blooms the algal bloom in the first part of it is not so much of a problem it's when it dies and sinks to the bottom it sits on the bottom you've got a layer of it on the bottom decomposing the, you know the, while it's decomposing it's actually taking all the oxygen out of the water which does one of two things we've been having bits of it come up on a yeah, and when you start seeing red clumps of yeah. jelly nasty horrible stuff start coming up on your knots you know your your backs against the wall to be fair we've had an all right day today really it's been it's been reasonably steady um, considering what we've had down there, but yeah, and the other reason, the other reason I target you certain times a year is it, it, it. I'm a great believer in being sort of versatile. Um, you've got to be in this game nowadays, where I used to predominantly spend sort of nine, ten months of my year wreck fishing for pollock, cod, ling. That fishery is 
not and it's nowhere near as good as it has been so you've had i've had to be a little bit versatile there's, changed over and done other bits and pieces there's nobody really that i know that targets congress no I mean. no there's not and to be fair they're a very sustainable you know fish to target folks try to recreationally yeah, but they they very rarely do they keep them no no i mean in this country they don't get eaten a great deal in this country they're not the you know firm favorite on the menu the ones that we land today where are those going they'll to? probably go to spain i mean i, I take them to the to either brixham or plymouth market they get auctioned the next day i don't find out to the following week but most of what i see that's bought um from what i'm told it goes to spain france there is a market for it there it's not a great market you know it's probably a tenth of the price of um well that's that's fine isn't it it's because it's it's something it that's not being point. it's something that's not being targeted here it's yeah. a sustainable catch it's non-quartered yeah so you can you it can take the pressure rest. off my other stocks that exactly. i'm fishing for so you know where i've done 10 years uh, sorry 10 days conga fishing for a year it's 10 days when I haven't been sort of Bassing or camped or on the bass or camped on the pollock or whatever. So as long as you keep yourself busy, I'm a great believer in if you can earn a day's pay, you know, it doesn't always, you don't always have to be chasing the golden egg. Um, these, it's a steady day's pay that we've got, it's not brilliant, but. These fish that we've had today, I mean, all you've done is straight away when you brought them on board is you've dispatched them yep. and we'll put them on ice and then we'll we'll gut them before we leave them in and yep. they're, they're whole when they go to the market, aren't they? They're whole when they go to market, yeah. Um, they're, <laughs> They're a little bit unpredictable eels if you don't look after them. Um, they do turn very quickly, so I mean, Which is why you I get them on to... ice very quickly. Later, they're not. They're, all, they're, all they're not a massive. They're not a massive payday fish either, though. But no, they're not. When there's steady. that many of them on the ground like that, yeah. you can still make yeah. a day's pay. I mean, to be fair, this is. I mean, we've had a lot of eels today, but. I wouldn't say it's been a tearing day. I've had a much worse days. I've had much better days. It's been a reasonable day, and there'll be a reasonable day's pay for, for well, me. I would have thought we've you know? we've had a cracking day. I mean, there's, yeah, there's two of the lads have bigger PBs already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, some reasonable fish. There. We've had two or three sixties there. I think it made it maybe two, three, four, six, or two or three sixties probably. My fish so far today has got to be that pollock that I had on that. that oh, me, yeah, that yeah first made. drop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we had a few nice pollock as well. I mean, a lot of small fish there, unfortunately, but there was, I don't know, three or four, three or four double figure ones well, that, there, weren't there? That little bit of bonus just by capitalising on, on the tide, rather than sitting doing that waiting. Yeah, yeah. You've had half a box of fish there, which yeah, is probably going to be a bonus bass, a few other bits and pieces, it all adds up come the end of the day. Yeah. It's a day's work, isn't it? Um, I'm getting a bite on there. Yeah. Have to go. Thanks for that. <laughs> no worries, mate. I hope it feel better. <laughs> Give it to him, Gubs! Give it to him! Give it to him hard, Gubs! Drop her hard! Harder! Warning, the following clip does show the cleaning of fish ready for market. If you do not wish to see this, please fast forward to 29.30 in the video. Thank you. Doing it when we started, didn't it? Just about to run back ashore now, we're getting all the gear. I'll tell you what, we have got a fair amount of gear there. All the fish is prepped and in ice in here. When we get alongside, we'll run the fish ashore. 
There we are, all the, all the catch is still brand new fresh on ice. Just got to run all the gear up now. You couldn't have come in at high tide, couldn't you? <laughs> uh, less of a ramp to go up. Yeah. There's some weight of eels there. They're all full down there as yeah. well. It's all loaded in there. That's off to market. There we are. The fish is all loaded in the van on the way to the market. I've tied it down the boat. I have had a fantastic day. I don't know about all you boys, but I think we're, we're pretty beat, to be honest. Mm. Um, a hard day's work. It was good fishing, but you've had, you said you've had you've had better. You're expecting better. Yeah, and that's we've had better days. We've had worse days. It wouldn't wouldn't tear him, but we caught enough to make a day's work out of it. So yeah. This good, this was a commercial fun. trip. Aaron is he's a commercial fisherman. He does also do charters. Happy day charters. I will link in the description of the video to his, his Facebook page, isn't it? Yeah, happy do. days adventure fishing. There we go. Um, we've already been talking about some some other future trips into other areas of the country. So yeah. Look out for that. Thank you again, mate. It's been, no worries, it's been mate. absolutely it's been, fantastic. Uh, it's been emotional. Boys, nice to see you all. Thanks, mate. Catch you Appreciate all soon, it. all right? Nice to see you all. Oh. All right. See you later on, mate. No worries. See you later. All right, boys. I hope you enjoyed joining us. I hope you found it interesting. All the very best. You can get see you later. Us, um,